So when we have a repeated game, I'm just going to use the same game we've used before. So 0, 6, 1, 1, 7, 5, and b equals 0, 3, 1, 1, 0, 1. And um, we can identify the, the Nash equilibrium for the, for the stage game. So just for this stage game, the, the best response to every column is the second row. And the best response uh, to the first row is the second column, and to the second row is the first and second columns. So we have um, two Nash equilibria. We have this one, and we have this one, um, which we can write down as um, 0, 1, oops, 0, 1, and one zero zero as well as zero one and zero zero one. So that's the Nash equilibrium for our, our stage game. But let's say we were having the repeated game, we're gonna play this twice. And for uh, ease of notation, we're just going to use this is R1, this is R2, and this is C1, C2, and C3. So we've got R1 here, and um, C1 here, and R, oops, sorry, R2 here, R2 here, and C3 here. And now to find the Nash equilibrium for the whole game, one way to identify this is to realize that if we just play a stage Nash at each repetition will also arrive, arrive at a Nash equilibrium for the, the whole game. So we have the, the four possibilities. So we have R2, R2, and C1, C1. We have um, R2, R2. Note that we'll always have R2, R2, and C1, C3, and R2, R2, and C3, C1, and R2, R2, and C3, C3. Now one way to realize that this is going to be a Nash equilibria is to think about what we're, we're doing. So the idea is that we're going to play this game, and then we're going to play the game again. And theoretically we could play the game again and again and again if, if t was, was bigger than 2, but we're, we've only got, got this. And what we use is a proof that a sequence of stage Nash is also a Nash for the repeated game, is by limiting ourselves and looking backwards. So if we assume that what we've done up until the last game is a Nash equilibria, and what we're currently doing in the last game is a Nash equilibria of the last game, does any player have a reason to deviate? And no, because there's no longer any reputation that's going to build up. And so if, for example, we were playing R2, R2, and C1, C1, and in this last move we're wondering does the column player have a reason to change this? Should C1 be changed? Well, no. Any move at that stage would, uh, given that we're in the second row, would at best be a move to C3, and there's no reason to do that. So we know that there's no reason to choose from R2 and, and C1 in that last stage. And then we just go backwards and realize that there's no further um, reason to deviate anywhere. So this sequence of stage Nash is also a Nash equilibrium. And we can go through and write down what the utility are. So R2, R2 and C1, C1 is going to have utility 2, 2. This will have utility 6, 2. This will have utility 6, 2 as well. And finally, we've got 10, 2. So there are some Nash equilibria that are better than others for, for some players. And what we're going to go towards is a an important idea of whether or not it's possible to find a sequence of plays, or more importantly, a strategy, which is a mapping from sequence of plays to, plays to actions, that is not one of these four, but at which neither player has a reason to deviate. And what we're going to see is that, yes, indeed, it's possible to do that.